and welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener, your host, Ken Lane, here every week talking about the landscapes of northern Arizona. And this is uh, the peak of the season. So in the mountains of Arizona, pretty much you can hone in that between Mother's Day and Memorial Day, we are at our zenith. I mean, the peak, the, everything's going in the ground. And so all the tomatoes are going in, all the flowers, the fruit trees, the shade trees, the privacy screens, the shrubs, the flowers, the roses, they're all going in. And so garden centers are packed full of all of the above. And it's time. So, in fact, this last week, we had a little bit of moisture, which is kind of nice, had reminiscent of maybe precursors of monsoons to come, which is very exciting. But mainly what happens when there's some moisture, when there's humidity, some cloud cover, it, uh, it, it takes the edge off of those new plantings. This is this was the absolute, like, perfect storm. Perfect, not storm, perfect planting weather for anything that was going in the yard. Because that new growth that comes out is, is tender. And so it's sensitive to cold. It's sensitive to sun, to too much rain. To, they're sensitive. And so if you can plant it while you, we don't have a lot of cold, which we didn't this week, of course, that's Mother's Day on. That's why the peak of the season is Mother's Day to Memorial Day, because it's the, the cold is gone. The humidity was greatly increased. I think I was measuring the 30s in my in my in my gardens. So I've got a, a humidifier reader or whatever. They're in the 30s, low 40s. And so that plants, they love that. Typically. May is 10%, 8%, no percent humidity. <laughs> so that's hard on plants, especially when you put a little bit of breeze with that. It's like putting a blow dryer to your plants. Well, this week you didn't have that. And so it was absolutely perfect. A little afternoon rain every once in a while. I can tell you that the, the few rains that we had this week were generally in the afternoon evenings. That's the reason that you're watering early in the morning. You do not want your plants to be wet going into the evening. You want them to be dry. Otherwise, you get mildews and leaf spots. There's all kinds of things that can happen to plants if they're wet a real long time. Kind of like holding your hand in a bucket of ice water for three days. What, when you pull your hand out, what's it gonna look like? Well, it's gonna have some issues. Well, leaves are the same way, only it doesn't take three days, it takes like a few hours. And so you'll start to see this leaf spot, white powder coating the foliage as powdery mildew. We're starting to see a little bit of that right now, but you're watering in the morning for two reasons, mainly to hydrate plants as they go into the heat of the day, they much prefer being hydrated, just like you. You're going out for a hike through the dells or out in the forest. You're going to hike Glassford Hill. You're going to going to walk down the Verde, and you're going to, you want to hydrate before you do all that, not after. And so plants are just like people. They want to be fully plump, ready to go, take on the heat of the day. So you water typically before 8 o'clock in the morning because it starts by 9, 10, it's starting to get hot. And so I've got my systems all programmed to start watering like three, four, five, six o'clock in the morning. They cycle through. I've got like nine valves. And so I just kind of systematically try to get them all done by eight o'clock in the morning. So everything is fully hydrated for the heat of the day. The second reason you don't want to water in the evening, that's what they do down in the Phoenix area, the deserts. The, why would anyone live there? It's so hot at 10 o'clock at night. I mean, come on, come up to God's country. It's much nicer up here. You can sleep at night. There you water at 10 o'clock at night. Up here, you don't do that. We're wanting to water way early so that the plants have time to dry out before they go to bed or before the evening comes because it's going to get cool. That's the insider tip. The one, the other thing that we are noticing. The bugs are out. And so everything's actively growing. Everything is growing. I mean, weeds are growing. The bugs are growing. So the peonies have bloomed. The pinstruments are out. I mean, everything is growing and looking good or bad, depending on if the bugs are out there. They kind of, they're eating. So, so plant samples are coming into the garden center right now with 
with two main problems. The leaves look like they've been wind whipped. They look like they're burned. They look like they're curling, like they're damaged, like they're, they're not able to grow. They're deformed. Those are all bug problems. There's one little bug. Actually, there's two. One you can't see, one you can. And so early spring, because this has been such a cool, long spring, it's been colder than normal. Uh, that's the perfect storm for bugs, a certain one. So thrip, T-H-R-I-P, thrip. They are also called no -seums. They can bite your skin sometimes or leave a little welt. They can kind of bite you and you kind of feel it. Well, so do your plants. And when they do, the, the leaves start to curl and wince. They kind of, they just get deformed. That is a bug. You can't see them because their other name is called no -seums. And so, but thrip are causing that damage and they are loving the taste of pitted fruits. They're loving the taste of apples and pears. They're loving the taste of maples. Uh, what else? We're seeing them on all kinds of stuff. The other one that you can see, there's a little black critter. He's called a tree aphid. He's getting on to, or she, or they. Actually, I think aphids are unisex. They can give birth, live birth. They don't lay eggs. They give live birth to young. And that's why they can go from just a few to they cover the whole plant in like a week. They just produce so quickly. Aphids. Aphids are on to roses, trees, shrubs. You should be checking if the leaves are deformed or crinkled in any way. It's almost guaranteed that it's either thrip or aphids or both. I've seen samples of both bugs on the same plant. So I want to give you a quick lesson on how do you deal with bugs as we start the bug season. So we're starting and it's only going to get more. The, the bugs get bigger as it gets warmer. So the grasshoppers hatched. Well, they're cute and little right now, but they're going to get humongous uh, as we get warmer. There's two main bug killers. There's organic and synthetic. So organic fertilizer, or fertilizer organic bug control, insecticides. The main one's called neem oil or triple action is how we have it. It's from Fertilome. So triple action is, a, is a, it's all organic and it's always my first line of defense whenever going after bugs, especially edible things. I would say anytime. I just like using organics because it's safe for me, much less the, the, the ladybugs and birds and your dogs. It's just better, but highly effective against the smaller insects, especially thrypanaphids. Highly, highly effective. So I always start with that. And there's a, another uh, a benefit to uh, triple action, which is the label's name, the product inside of it is neem, N-E-E-M, neem oil, but the, the, the product name, you're, you're researching it as triple action. Um, there's a benefit to this in that it also affects powdery mildew, which is a, it's a, we're starting to see this white coating onto roses, especially the buds, onto red leaf photinia. So it's just kind of this white mildew is getting on there. It coats that spore so it can't let it spread. So there's multiple benefits. I always start here first, no matter what, triple action. As the bugs get bigger or the or you let it go, and now you've got an infestation, I move up to synthetic fertilizers or man-made. Usually these are, um, these are, well, they're not organic. So we sell one that's called in and out broadleaf insecticide. So it's in and out insecticide. It is a man-made of a organic, it's as safe as you can get and still be and still be synthetic, basically. So stay away from malathion and all these heavy, toxic stuff. I mean, come on, they stink up the whole neighborhood. You know there's something wrong with that. You don't, they're too strong. I think there's there's different strengths. This in indoor outdoor there is safer but kills a much broader range of insects, including the big things like caterpillars and grasshoppers and blister beetles, the things that are really hard. Organics aren't very good at killing those things, but now you can go to a synthetic. So you basically have organic or synthetics. Both are kind of neat in the yard. I always have these, both of these are on my garden shelf throughout the year. I start with the organic, and then I finish up with when it's just not going away. I'm pulling out the big guns. Sometimes you got to go all marine, just kind of land and take care of the issue right now. And so the in and out insecticide does it.
That's how you take care of bugs. Got more in store for you. We got Lisa Waterside coming in with your garden questions right after this. Thank <music> you.